I started in a very simple way, actually. I thought, well, since I knew so little about the place, I wanted initially to, to speak to people who had been around, who had been, in fact, combatants at the time of the start of the state. So I spoke both to Arab Israelis, Palestinians, Israelis, um, about what that time in their life meant, what their perspectives were. I was kind of interested in this idea of being a bridge or a conduit, the ability to cross between one community and the other and to, to listen and to follow the trajectory of that message onward. Uh, the, actually, the Desert Bloom series that's part of this exhibition grew out of a, a much longer, in a way, inquiry that was my first project in Israel, which was entitled uh, Memory Trace, which was looking at the sites uh, of the villages that had been evacuated in 48, following the trajectory from those villages to the people who are today living in exile in the refugee communities or in the West Bank. And so for me, what was interesting was this idea that you could meet people who are now 80, 90, 100 years old and then follow their story back across the border to, to the village that they left, that they fled 65 years ago and to which they have not um, returned in the time in between. So in, in, in a way, looking at what had happened to those villages of 48, the way in which the land had transformed those spaces, I, uh, in a very sort of um, fortuitous trip in a way down south in the Negev, was in a village, uh, sitting in a, what had been a village actually, under a tent looking out across the land where the village had uh, been raised just a couple of weeks prior. And now already were the troughs in place for the beginning of the afforestation of a JNF forest that would occupy that area. It would be entitled the Ambassador Forest, which would be a green belt that would surround Beersheba. And in a way, I think um, immediately I had the sense of, um, it wasn't something that had struck me ever before, but I had the sense that perhaps it was important to see the context, to move above the land and to think about this invocation from Ben-Gurion to make the desert bloom. So it was a kind of um, open-ended questioning of what the invocation to make the desert bloom actually had done to the land in the, in the intervening years. Well, in terms of the research actually and the way in which I worked, I, I worked in a very odd um, manner in that I thought it was important at first to experience the land from above without the interface of great research, meaning that I didn't want to, in essence, read about a space and then fly above it and photograph it. I rather wanted to be open to respond to what the land was instructing me, teaching me. And in doing so, flying many times across the, the southern Negev, I felt as though that allowed me the opportunity to be receptive to subtle clues that I might otherwise not have been receptive to. Um, following on having made this set of images, I then went back and determined the ones that I felt were the most effective and began to research what that specific spot on earth, the history of that place, what was going on at the moment there. So some of them are about um, uh, existing villages, Others are about afforestation or mil militarization of the land, the transformation of the landscape. And this idea for me that was very important was imagining in the spaces where you see the beginning of a forest atop what had perhaps been a village, to imagine that in, in 20 years from now, were I to return to that same place, I would, I would see this beautiful forest, but would I know what was subsumed within the land? Would I be able to access the memory of what the land holds? And so I think in a way the, the process for me, or maybe that suited my sensibilities best, was this idea of, of, of experiencing something in the first instance and then interrogating it very carefully, laterally, to find out what in fact how that fit into this puzzle, puzzle of the dynamics, the way in which 
um, the Negev is being transformed in the last years. And then when I, started to, when I started to research more carefully what those images were, I looked also at the history of aerial photography of Israel, and particularly the Negev, finding that in fact the Bavarians had flown above the land recording the space in 1918. And in 1945, there was also an archive from the RAF, the British having, having photographed the landscape. Similarly, in the Haganah archives, there were many images of the land. And this was, in a way, what I realized about aerial photography is the great um, power in one's hands when you're photographing the space from, from above. It's a kind of um, orchestrated uh, militarization of that space. And I actually wanted to turn that construct a bit on its head to try and make images that were perhaps um, open and a little bit more intimate with the space that I was looking at. I wanted to, 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 to trim away the layers of the surface and try to allow the, what's subsumed within the land to come forward.